Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 200 of Build Your Stash and Craft. And today, we are going to make a really super simple um, accordion file to put all of your little embellishments in. And, you know, we've been making them so many different ways, but I was playing around the other day, and this just kind of like popped into my head, so we're going to just do this really quick. I just have a magazine. Now... We're getting ready to go into the colder times where we're going to have to stay in a bit more. If you get a chance, ask your friends for magazines, collect up your own magazines. Um, our library gives away magazines for free. People just drop them off and then they go on a table and you can pick up whatever you want. And, um, you know, try and get maybe some magazines with people in them, some magazines with products, you know, like even like catalogs, they have clocks or that type of thing. Um... And so that maybe, you know, this winter we could do some collaging or, you know, put together some funny people or something like that. But, um, so, and that's where almost all of my magazines come from. They just come from the library. So this is just a plain old magazine. And what we're going to do is very easily make it into a file folder. The way that we're going to do this is pages are stuck together which doesn't make any difference because they separate we're going to take a page and we are going to fold it right into the middle and you want to get it right into the middle now here's the thing if you don't really want to mess with like really pushing it into the middle you actually can leave it out just a little bit like let's say that's about a half an inch you just want to make sure that you leave them all out about the same and that's why I just stuff it into the middle because then I don't have to worry about um, my pages being different sizes so I'm just gonna take that and pull it right into the middle and then just give it a press right out to you don't get it all right how did I do that there just give it a press okay so then we just have a half a page now, what I'm going to do is, because I've already got some done, because however many pockets you want, you want to make twice as many pages. So we're going to do a six pocket one. So we're going to need 12 pages. So I already have 10 pages done here. So what I'm going to do is, now because this one folds back that way really nicely and I can see my center, I'm going to just fold it like this so I can get right down there into the center. And this one has already been folded once, but... I undid it so I could just show you two times what I'm doing. So we're going to fold it in half. Then you're going to take your stick glue. You can use wet glue, but because magazine pages are um, really, really thin, wet glue does make them wrinkle more. So I'm going right down the crease along all three outside edges of the fold and just a couple in the middle. And then just fold that over. But and the thing is, if you have if you only have wet glue, you know, there's no problem with that. Or you may want to use wet glue because wet glue does make it kind of crinkly and just gives it that extra feel and texture to it. So, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with using wet glue. So that was my number 11. So here's number 12. And again, I'm going to fold it over, get it right down into that crease. And if they're not exact, it's it doesn't really matter. They don't have to be absolutely perfect. And then I'm going to run some glue down the middle, outside edges, and just a couple there, just to glue those two halves together. Fold it in half again. And there we go. So now I have 12 folded um, half sheets of paper. So we've got those. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it from the rest of the magazine. And I'm just going to carefully, I did take the cover off the magazine because we want to kind of keep the glue of our pages. Uh-oh, is this one going to come unglued? I don't know. We'll find out. My last one did not. But we want to kind of keep the glue on there. We'll find out. Okay, so they did kind of come apart. So it's a good thing that that happened, because the last time I did it, they just stayed together. So that was all together, nice and, 
nice and solid. But so what we're going to do is I'll just grab some washi tape and I'll put a piece of washi tape on there because once we get them all glued together, they're not going to come apart anyways. But let's make sure that they stay together while we're gluing. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I grabbed some of the, the painted tape um, that we got at the Dollar Street. I'm going to use this one right here that hasn't been stenciled on because we're not going to see it. So um, I really don't want, I don't want to use my pretty ones. But I'm just going to measure that. That should be enough. that out of the way. Just lay that right down on the table. doesn't matter if you have it perfectly in half or anything like that because it's going to be covered. So just hold them all together. Put them on about halfway and then bring this up like that. So if your magazine stayed together Where's my sample one? There. So this is the first one that I did. And, you know, it just... How did I do that? Hmm. Um, it looks like I must have come apart a little bit right there, so I glued on just a strip of the magazine right there. It must have started to come apart. So I did wind up gluing that one together, or, you know, kind of taping it together also. It's been a while since I did the sample one. I didn't realize that. And I don't really want to wrap this around the edges because I don't want to glue the, the pages together here, only along the bottom. So I'm going to cut it really close so there's no extra tape on my edges there. Okay, so now... I want six pockets, so I have 12 pages folded in half. If you want seven pockets, do 14 pages. If you want four pockets, do eight. You just need two pages per pocket. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to take your stick glue or your regular glue, whichever you have, and we're just going to run it along this outside edge and this outside edge and then fold those two pages together. So that's the first and second folded page are now glued together. Okay, so when the glue dries. All right, so then we're gonna just leave that one open, get it out of our way, we're done with those two pages. Then we're gonna take the next two pages, so page three and page four. Because you don't wanna glue page two to page three or it won't work. So then just fold that all together give it a good press. I find it for me easier to like to fold it back together to give it a good press because that way everything kind of stays like lined up and everything. Um, so there's page one and two. There's page three and four. So now remember we're done with those. We're going to do five and six. And you could make a lot of these I would imagine out of one magazine because you're really not using that many pages at all so you could make one for you know like all hearts but different color hearts red hearts orange you know red orange yellow green blue purple so one two okay there's those two so we're going to go to the next two just this one Just we just need a line of glue on the edge. And as I'm going through and looking at these, I think on the very first page, I didn't get my glue all the way out to the corner. I'll check that this time, because it seems like every time I go to open it up, every time I go to open it up, this corner right here separates. Now, granted, the glue's not dry, but yep, there's no glue there. So let's get that glue all the way out to the end. There we go. So there's one. And there's two, and there's three, and I separate them every time, and that is so that they don't get glued together because of the way that I'm just gluing, you know, right on top. Is there glue here? There, I didn't get glue out to the end of this one either. So let's just do that. Okay, now we're gonna take the next two, 
leaving all of the rest be. Just remember that part so that you don't glue like three pages together. There we go. And then this is our last one. We'll do that one real quick and then we'll separate them. Make sure they're not sticking together. Now you can make that bead of glue as little as you want it. I just make it the width of my stick. It does leave, you know, that much of your page glued together. So here's my pocket, but you know, this much of my pocket is glued together. To me, that's okay. Number one, it would be more solid as I'm opening it up. And number two, that's a big enough pocket that losing a little bit of room on each end is not going to make a difference. But if you just want to put a little thin, thin line, you can do that and you'll have a little bit more pocket space. Alrighty, so I'm going to just separate them. There's one. And there's number two. Number three. And see, this is this is what I mean. This is why I separate them each time that I glue them. There's number four. And there's number five. And there's number six. Okay, 12 pages gives me six pockets. So now we have these six pockets, but you know, that's not an accordion file folder. So what are we going to do next? We're going to take our first pocket, which is page one and two. We're going to take that pocket and we are going to glue it in the middle and just kind of glue the middle. You know what I mean? Like there is no exact measurement for it. The stick glue is very bumpy. Um, I glued from here to here. So there's just a little left at the end because you need to be able to have the expansion. You glue it in the middle because then what happens is when you go to open it, it will pull open the next page. So there's page one and two that we just glued to page three and four. Making sure our ends are not glued together. So now when you pull these apart, now there you have your accordion file folder. So there's one and two glued to three and four. Now we are going to glue on three and four and glue it to five and six. And if you want to measure to make sure that you do these, the glue parts exactly, you can do that. I just put them in the middle. I'm going to glue that to the next two pages. Like that. Then I'm going to glue this one because now we look like Get the first and the last and then open them up. So now we look like that. Now see right here we're coming apart because our glue's not dry yet, but that's going to glue right up to there. So now I'm going to do the next one. And that is our two pages glued together. Our pocket is getting glued to this pocket. And then we're going to put glue on this one. and glue this pocket to it, put glue on this one, and like I said if you're really particular that they're all evenly glued you can just measure. This is our last pocket and we're going to glue that together. Now when you're gluing stuff together like this all in a pile you do have to remember to go through and make sure that you separate. You know, you don't want to pull hard because the glue's not dry yet. But now there is our accordion file folder. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, we've got all six pockets, so they're not stuck together. And we've got lots of expansion space on there. So I think that that looks really good. Now, it's a magazine. I'm making this for myself to hold little bits of, you know, um, cutouts or, or whatever it is that I'm making. Maybe even little, um, I have one like this that I hold my small stencils in. Um, and I just slide them in there because I've got some stencils that I've made that are long and only about this wide. And they fit perfectly into one of these. And um, so, to me, I do not have any kind of a problem that it has this in the middle that doesn't bother me at all. If that bothers you, you're not going to want to make one out of a magazine because covering every one of these pieces of paper would, you know, trying to cover the insides of the pocket would be kind of silly. Um, 
I could just take regular paper and, you know, fold it in half and glue them all together to, to make one that is just colored paper. So, but we do want to do something with the outside and we need to do something with the outside because we need it to fold over and cover our outside so that it so it looks nice and so that it holds our bits inside. So I grabbed a few of our um what's this Kool-Aid guide paper and I grabbed some of our stenciled um, tissue paper and I thought that that might be nice and I really want to use this one and I'm just wondering what color I want to put behind it. The yellow pink about really contrast it with the blue hmm I think I like the pink I think I do like the pink all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here and again we're not going to make it any longer than our outside edges because those outside edges need to expand like this so we're not going to wrap our paper around the end or otherwise it would just be stuck shut. So we only just want to just do the front and the back. That's it, not the ends. So I'm just going to line this up here. And it's okay if it sticks out a little bit so long as you don't fold it over the end. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make it just a touch long, maybe like a quarter of an inch longer. And then I'm going to just fold this so that... I didn't bring a ruler out with me, so I'm just going to fold it. Lining up both ends should make my line pretty straight if you make sure that your edges line up this way. And I think I'll just give it just give it a tear. And I really didn't press that fold super well. I should do that so I don't rip right into the middle of my paper. And you can just cut along that line. I don't know why. I have a hard time cutting a fold with a pair of scissors. But we all have those little things that just bug us. Got a couple little stick out parts, so we're just going to get rid of those. Don't have to. Now this one's got a pretty leave here, so I think that we'll fold it this way. Right, now what I want to do is take it and fold it holding this on here like this, lining it right up with the edge. <coughs> Excuse me. And fold it this way. <coughs> now that pretty leaf is gonna be on my back, so that's really cool, because I'm gonna cover the front. And then we're gonna just fold this over, and this will be our flap. Now. As we start filling this, this flap really should be longer than this. Because what's gonna happen is as we start filling it and it starts expanding, then you know we're gonna go to put the flap over it and the flap's only gonna go that far and all of our little bits are gonna fall out. So, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put another piece underneath of this just because this is the size paper that I had, so it's, a, it's the paper I'm going to use. I think what I'll do is I think I'll use the yellow. Because I didn't bring out two pieces. And so I am just going to line this up. And I'm going to cut it right there. Actually, I'm going to rip it right there. Paper is folded over on this corner. Okay. Line up this side. Come over here and line this. <laughs> I'm just doing great there. Okay, we're gonna line it up right there. Give it a good press and give it a rip. I don't need all of it, so this part that I ripped down here isn't going to make a difference. OK. 
Okay, so I'm going to glue this right on there like that. And I'm going to bring it pretty much down as far as the bottom of my cover. Maybe... Mm, a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, because we're going to want to, well, and we don't have to, I was going to say we, we could put a button there, but we don't have to, we could just do a string that goes all the way around. So, shall we make it, let's make it, let's just make it full length. The longer it is, the more expansion width it gives you, because it's, it's not going to be there. Once you start filling it, it won't be that long anymore. So I'm going to put that right up there. And I'm going to line that right up there, right over here, just like that. There we go. So that is going to be what's on my cover. And so now what I'm going to do is, because this is my cover, and I'm going to want to put something in here like, you know, a string to go around, I am going to leave a little bit extra on the back so I have two thicknesses right in this area. So I'm just going to come here to the back. I'm going to fold it and rip it. There we go. Okay, so this part right here is going to be thicker. You know, I've got this little extra piece here. I think I'll just throw that in there too because that will make it even thicker. That way, that's where my little string's going to be attached and it will be much sturdier. Especially if you make one and you just love it and you get so used to using it because it's like, oh, I know my hearts are in the pink one. Um, and then you ruin it and you got to make another one and then it's like, where are my hearts? Which, you know, which one are they in? I'm very much a visual person and I very much, you know, like, I don't always label things. I try and label things, but I do just get to the point where it's like, I know exactly which box I need to go into or whatever. I forgot to put that in there. So we're just going to leave it out. But that would have just made it a little extra sturdy. But we've got the glue here. We've got two layers of paper and we're not going to be real rough on it. So, but that would have definitely made it sturdier. So then I'm just going to take this. And I'm going to glue it to the pink flap. And I'm also going to glue the pink flap to this. Now, at this point, this may be the point to use a little bit of wet glue because it's it does hold better. And so we can just put some wet glue on here. And really what I should have done is just do this part right here and get it on my accordion and then do the flap. I do want to make sure that I spread that right out to the edges. I want it in this center crease. I'm even going to put some right in the center crease. Because we want to make sure we get a nice good hold. I do like to flatten it out. It's less lumpy that way when you glue it. Find my fold line up both ends and because I made it just a little bit longer I can leave a little bit on each end and not have to worry about it and then I'm just gonna fold that over and give it a really nice press I love how that leaf looks on the back isn't that pretty All right, now I'm going to have to be careful because I did put glue out to the end, so I don't want to glue the front and the back together. And once I get it all together, I may trim that off so it doesn't get a little bit, so it doesn't get tatty. I don't know. I'll see. Just spread this out like this. That's a lot of glue. This one over to the front. Give it a good press. Turn it this way so I can really. And then make sure that I haven't glued it together. Okay. 
Now I will put the glue on here so that I can glue my flap on. And then remember the heavy part is what's going to be on the outside so that we can put a string on it. So we'll do that just like that. Fold it over like that. I like that. Alrighty, now I'm going to I'm going to throw this parchment paper down here because I've got glue all over my table. So that I can give it a good press. There we go. So that's going to go like that. And so now, when we open this up, I've got glue a little bit on some of my pockets, so I need to make sure. There we go. A lot of times when I do things like this, I'll go through and I'll do the ends, then I'll let it sit and dry, then I'll do the middle, then I'll let it sit and dry, and then I'll do the, the decorating. Um, so even in here, I'm like pulling this one right here apart because it's not dry yet. So I may have to go back in and touch. Yeah, see it even, it came apart. Put some more glue on there. And that's all you have to do. If you get it, if you get a spot and you pull it open, oh no, it came apart. Put some glue on it. So there we go. So now it can open. We can have a string on here. Like this. We'll put the string right on the end. I'm going to just kind of round this a little bit. And it will, as it gets fuller and fuller, it will kind of round itself, you know, to adjust to the size of, of where you're holding it. So this one will come over like this, and this will be able to expand that far. And really, you're probably not going to want it to expand any further than that. So... Um, I think that I will probably trim up this edge of the paper, especially here at the top, because that's just going to get tatty. I want to fold it in. No. So, this is what we have so far. And then I want to put this right on there and it's got a little rip right here and so that's just where I'm going to rip it and rip it right there and I'm just gonna rip it it doesn't have to be perfectly straight or anything I just want that organic type edge I'm gonna rip the side too and all papers rip differently most of them have a grain to them so this one ripped very straight going this way but going up and down it does not and so when you're ripping a paper if you want to grab a long piece of paper and just give it a big rip um, pay attention to whether the the grain goes that way or not um, because you may wind up with you know a very crooked rip but if you're going with the grain um, it will rip straight you know very easily so we will take a little bit of this off. And don't want to take off too much because I want it to pretty much cover. There we go. And so this is going to be right here. 
and this is my front cover here. I'm going to glue this down with water glue. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go away and let this dry because I want it to dry and then I'm going to trim the edges. I'm going to trim these edges on the top here and on both ends. But I'm going to just let this sit and dry for a little while and then I will come back and water glue the front of it. I don't want to do that while it's wet because I really want this to dry. You can use your heat gun to dry it and then touch up any spots that may be coming apart. Make sure that when you set it to dry, you know, I usually kind of do something like stick a little something in the pockets, kind of like this. Just put something in there. It doesn't have to be anything specific. And since the pockets are really not that wet, you can even just like roll up a piece of paper until it's kind of thick and don't even pinch it and just put it in there so it just holds that apart. And do that all the way so that your pages can get some air in there to get dry. So just kind of put one, something, anything in each pocket so that it dries. Try and find some scrap paper here. Few more pieces yeah see if you just roll it up like that but don't squish it it will because it doesn't have to you know it's not really doesn't have to be strong it just needs to give it a little bit of space just like that so we've got one two three four five pockets we need one more piece of paper and my fingers are covered with glue Okay, last one. And that one I'm going to kind of bow it out just a little bit. Open it up, I guess I should say. So I'm going to let this dry. If there's any place that I feel needs a touch-up of glue once it's dry, then I can go in and glue those spots back together again. So I'll let this dry, and then I will trim off the little bit of the extra pink that I have on there. And then I will come back and... Um, or Well, I'm going to put the water glue on the front and and put this on it too. So, not that one, this one. Although that one's really pretty too. I could put that on now, because on the inside it really, you know, it's gonna be bent and everything, you don't need that. I don't want it on the back because the flower's on the back. So this is gonna be water glued on here. So once everything dries, I'll water glue this on. We'll come back, we'll put our string on there and um, see what it looks like. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I'm all dry. I used water glue to put the tissue paper on the top. And if you don't know what water glue is, water glue is just um, one part water to two parts PVA glue, which is like Elmer's glue or um, any kind of, you know, the Dollar Tree white glue, kids glue. And so it's two parts glue to one part water. And then you just paint it on with a paintbrush put down whatever you want to put down and then paint over the top of it and you get a really nice good seal. So that's on there and everything else is all dry. So that's that's what we have here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now your last one, because your last one is glued all the way across the back your last one does not open like all of the rest open because it is more solid and your first one also does not open quite the same way because it's it's being held straight on one side and it's only expanding on one side um so that's normal if you go well what's wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that it's just that one side will stay straight and then the other side will expand out whereas the ones in the middle both sides expand out like this so that's done and now we just want to make it so that we can tie it up so i grabbed out um the beads that we bought when we um, bought some used jewelry and then i so i just kind of want to look at um kind of already looked through it but I thought that it would be nice to have one of these like little crystal beads on each end and um, so 
I'm going to use a wire needle and a wire needle is just, I just take a piece of wire, just a straight piece of wire, fold it in half so that you know you have an area that's going to catch your ribbon and um, and for this one to make it really thin I just went ahead and I just stripped the paper off of a bread tie because that's really really thin um, wire so and so then you just take your ribbon and I just got a long piece of ribbon so you take your ribbon and put it in like this or string or whatever it is that you want now you you know the thing is will it fit through the hole of your bead that's always the question um, because these beads have really little holes in them so um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my pliers to grab a hold of that I fold it over just a little bit of the ribbon so I only have a short amount of time that both pieces have to try and go through and then we'll just see if we can pull this through and you definitely there we go we got it you definitely need your your pliers to pull that wire through because that was really really tight so I have one of these now on each end because I already tried it on the other end and you know and then what it's going to do is because this is organza especially but really whatever you're using it will mess up the end of your ribbon a little bit when you've got to pull it that tight I'm not going to cut that off yet because then I have decided I thought that these were really pretty crystals and um so I thought I would put one of these on each end and they're pink and they've got the little um they have the little loop on them on each end they have a little a little loop and so I thought that I would put these on and then put a little charm on the other side I'm gonna tie this on but in order to easily get it through that loop I'm gonna use my wire needle again because it's you know that that little hole in that loop is not huge if you can see that there and so using the wire needle just makes it easier now because we've got lots of space here that one is easier to pull through and we don't need our um, pliers to do that and then what I'm going to do is I am just going to tie a knot in my ribbon to hold that right on the very end just tie a knot in there I like to do a double knot to make sure that it stays So get that one through there, give it a really good pull, and there we go. Now I'm going to cut that off pretty short, because I really don't want it sticking out, although it really wouldn't hurt if it stuck out. It would just be a little added interest. Maybe we'll do that. I'll just cut it on an angle to cut off the, the yucky part, and leave that stick up there. Yeah. I'm going to bring this down a little bit closer. There. Alrighty. And now I'm just going to put a little charm on the end. And this is pretty. This little pearl is pretty. Do I have two of those? I only have what I got, you know, like by taking the jewelry apart, so I didn't get very many charms. No, nope, but I do like these, and that gives us a nice contrast. So these are little shells, some kind of a little shell. I'm going to take, now it's got a chip out of it. I'm going to use these two right here. They've already got a jump ring on them even. Too bad there was only one little pearl. And then I'm just going to use my pliers, find the opening of that jump ring. And whenever you open a jump ring, never pull them apart. Always just move them sideways, like that. If you can see that. And then put that on there. And then just move it sideways to make it go back. It will stay lined up, it'll stay round that way. And if you pull them apart like this, you can never really get them back to meet. Um, 
yeah, at least not easily. So let's quick do the other end if I did not lose my needle. Oh boy. Let's see here. Oh, I've got this out already. There it is. Whew. I already lost one. I peeled the wire and set it on the table here, and I have no idea where it's at. But I am going to have to find it when I'm done here, because Papa's little dog loves to chew on anything sharp and hard. I don't know what it is, but she just has this thing. She finds any little sharp thing that I've dropped, she finds it. So I have to make sure I find it before her. I'm going to go get my magnet and go across the table and across the floor to find it. That's the easiest way to find something metal. So we'll just put a double knot in here. I didn't leave this tail as long. So that makes it just a little bit harder. I think I got it. There we go. Yep, I got it. Really give it a good tight, tight, tight pull. And then trim that piece of ribbon off. Yeah, that looks cute, I like that. And then we'll just do this one really quick. And then I'll sh show you how we're gonna put it on our book for a closure. And again, just pull them apart and then push them back together. So there we go. That makes a really pretty little dangle. And when you put the two of them next to each other, it's even better. And pull this one down a little bit. I'm going to cut this little bit a little shorter. I just kind of have a thing about the sides looking about the same. There we go. And then... What we're going to do is we're going to take our cover and we're going to punch a hole in it. We are going to cut a heart. Um, you know when you can buy those little round hole protectors. But if you don't have one, you can just do it like this. Just cut any shape that you want. I want to see if I like the way that looks. I want it a little bit smaller. So I'll just trim it down just a little bit. I just need enough room inside the middle of it to punch a hole. Here we go. I like the way that that looks. So then I am just going to just try and center this in the center of whatever shape you've cut. My things are sticking. Got one little spot that's not cutting very well. There we go. Okay, so now, hmm, pushed it back in there. Now we have our little hole protector. And you could do two of them if you want to. If you want to put one on the back, you can do that also. As a matter of fact, I wonder what a yellow one would look like on the front. Let's do a yellow one for the front maybe, and we'll put the pink one on the back. They don't have to be the same because you're not gonna see them together. See how this looks. Oh, I think I like that better because it shows up better, except that I need to round.
around the top of the heart a little bit more. There we go. Oh yeah, I like the way that looks much better. I like that. Okay, so that's going to be our front. And again, the hole doesn't have to be in the exact same spot as the other one because we're not going to see them together. We will line them up with the hole that we punch in the cover. And of course you could go around these also. I'm going to then just punch a hole. Right about there. And then just put some glue on this. So if you have punches, you know, like little stars or hearts or diamonds or whatever, you could punch a piece of paper out and then just punch a little hole in the middle of it. Then I'm just going to line up, because I used the same hole punch, they'll line up perfectly. Now I could have um, edged around that, but I didn't think about it. I didn't think about bringing anything out to do that, so I couldn't, but you can do that. And because this is going to open up this way, so this will be the top, I'm going to put this heart on like this. When it's closed, it will be upside down, but when it's open and you're looking at it, it will be correct. So then we're just going to take our um, ribbon. I'm going to make it just a little bit offset like that. Make one a little higher than the other and find my middle point. Give that a good press. And then I'm just going to go from the back to the front so that my these two strings will be more towards the front. Oh, well, they're not. They're towards the back. But that's still the way that I like it. Because then, then it just folds like that. And then you can just take this, wrap it around a couple times. Now you want this to be long. And the reason being is because you're going to add stuff in here. So that's, you know, so we'll wrap it around a couple of times and tuck it through there. And there we go. Now it's going to stay closed. But as we start to fill this up, then that will be able to move and just, you know, move right up so that this can all expand and it will still be able to close it. So that's why you want a little bit of extra on there so that as you fill it, then you've got room for it to expand. Because if you make it tight like this and super short, it won't be able to, when it goes to expand, this won't be long enough then to wrap around it. So there we go. I like the way that that turned out. I love the little dangles on there. And again, those are just from pieces that we got from jewelry at the secondhand store so you know you don't have to have anything big and fancy to make something beautiful and i love the way that the black here brings out the black in the stamping so i hope that you enjoyed this project for next week we are going to need just plain silver paper clips you know none of the none of the colored ones the with the coating on them because the coating when you go to bend them and stuff it rips so we want just plain paper clips um this is the small size so let's get a small one and a big one and i hope that i have some big ones here because i'm not going anywhere but um but yeah let's do that let's pick up a small and a large regular silver paper clip for next week so that'll be two dollars out of our bank and just so that you know we have right now we have 170 We'll spend two dollars on our paper clip, so that will leave us three dollars more to put in our bank. That's a hundred and seventy three dollars in our bank that we've saved mostly because we've been crafting with what we have during the pandemic and um but so you know this does just go to show you that if you just set a certain amount what you can afford and each week just go pick up a little something um you can wind up with a very large stash. Of different things to use we have a heat gun we have a rotary cutter we have or you know like a paper cutter and um, and we have a scoreboard we have you know just so many things we have a Dremel 
and an iron. And, you know, I mean, those are the big things that, no, we couldn't buy those with $5 a week. But by spending $2 next week, we've got $3 to save. And that still keeps us within our $5 budget. And eventually we get really nice things for this for this series. So, you know, so just remember that it's all about the budget. Stick to the budget. And don't spend it all if you don't need to spend it all. If you go to spend the $2 for these, don't spend the other three. Keep it. Put it in a safe place so that you can get something big um, and, you know, decide what big things you want to save up for. And then save part of your $5 for those things and eventually you really will get there. So... Thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind watching a commercial here and there, that does help me out. And leave a comment down below. I love your comments. It does usually take me a few days to get to answering them, um, but I always answer them and I always read them. And it's just so nice to hear all your lovely comments. Thanks for stopping by. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.